Chapter 26, No Escape When Mrs Howe, the librarian, asked if either of them could help sort some books for a short while after school, Mariam offered to stay for half an hour. She only lived around the corner. Anything later and her mother and uncle would become worried. Sade fumbled over her excuse. Her brother would be waiting for her outside his school. It wasn't true, but Mrs Howe said she quite understood. Sade could hear Mama's voice in her head. A lie has seven winding paths. The truth, one straight road. Sade quashed Mama's voice in her head by calculating the time it would take Mariam to get from school to her uncle's shop. If Mariam saw her with Marcia's gang after school, she'd surely suspect something. But if Mariam stayed in the library until four, she might just m miss bumping into them. Had Chardy been asked that afternoon why she was going to give in to Marcia's threats, especially after what Mariam had told her about her family, she would surely have broken down. If Papa had only been there, she would have gone to him. However much she would have cried and sobbed about Marcia this and Marcia that, they would have made a plan. She could even imagine Papa going to talk to Marcia's parents, to the cousin and of course to Marcia herself. Papa would have made Marcia see reason. Where the water rules, the land submits. But she was on her own, just like the child on the book cover looking into the mirror and a face cracked into a thousand pieces. That lonely terror was hers too. There was only one thing to do. However hurt she was by Femi shouting at her, shutting her out, he was still her little brother. Hadn't Mama and Papa always expected more of her because she was older? If she didn't do what Marcia wanted and Marcia's cousin beat Femi up, she would be to blame. She had to steal the turquoise lighter so Femi would not be harmed. Perhaps then they would leave her alone. Once she proved herself, what more could they want? After the final bell, Mariam seemed anxious to say something to Sade before going to the library. I don't tell about my family to everyone, but you're my friend, OK? Mariam's eyes searched Sade's face for a response. They were timid, yet strangely brave. At any other time, Sade would have felt good that Mariam had trusted her. This afternoon, it made her feel worse. It's OK, she said almost curtly. I have to go. See you tomorrow. She tried to smile, but was actually pressing her lips together to cover her agitation. Marcia and Donna had indicated that Sade was to go into the shop by herself. Now all she wanted was to get the thing over and done with. She squeezed through the crowd of students at the bus stop and hurried down the main road. This time she took in the petrol station and the row of shops on her left. Through the windows she could see how small they were inside. No hiding places where you wouldn't be seen by the shopkeeper. She had no idea where she would find the cigarette lighters in the corner shop. They might even be in a locked cabinet. What if Marcia knew that all along and she was being set up once again for a trick? Perhaps she wasn't meant to succeed and Marcia was just to, out to grind her underfoot. Sade's heart was now juttering so fiercely she was sure that anyone behind the counter... Mariam's uncle or a mother would be suspicious. The full seriousness of what she was about to do suddenly hit her. What if she was caught stealing? The police would be called. Of course, that's what Marcia wanted. And then how would she and Femi ever get permission to stay here in England? All that asylum business with Mr Nathan would be for nothing. The immigration people would say she was a thief. And when Papa came, they would say they didn't want someone whose daughter was a thief. How stupid she was, falling right into Marcia's trap. Sade stood at the junction with the corner shop just down the road. No, she was not going in there. She turned swiftly back along the main road. But before she could go anywhere, she found herself being rapidly swung around. Once again, Marcia and Donna grabbed her by the arms and within seconds were jogging her down the side road. The only other people walking in the dismal street were over in the next block too far away to see. Even if they had been nearby, they would probably have thought it was all a game. 
Thought you'd change your mind, did you, chicken? Marcia panted. Marcia may have come to give you a hand. Thought you might be a bit nervous as it's your first time, John equipped. They stopped a short way from the corner shop. Briefly, Marcia explained in a subdued voice that she would distract the shopkeeper by buying something whilst Sade took the lighter from a shelf on the right-hand side. Sade would have to be quick. If there was a second person behind the counter, Donna would keep her busy. Nicking's easy, giggled Donna. Anyone can do it. Passing underneath the blue sign with the words Dord Store in neat black letters, the pounding in Sade's heart froze. A tall, gaunt woman wearing a headscarf surveyed the three of them from a door leading to the back of the shop. She had high cheekbones and Mariam's eyes. She stood with a quiet dignity. A man in a white cap and tunic was stacking papers in front of the counter. Marcia asked loudly if he could show her what kind of posh chocolates he sold because it was her mum's birthday. Donna made her way to the counter and began running her fingers along the rows of sweets. Sade saw the lady's eyes follow suit. Sade turned away, forcing herself to scan the rows of shelves to her right. Notepads, pens, scissors, sticking tape, all sorts of little gadgets and closest to the counter, a small tray of cigarette lighters. Blue, red, silver, green, but no turquoise. She turned Marcia, sorry, she heard Marcia asking Mariam's uncle to bring down a large box of chocolates from the top shelf and Mariam's mother helped with a stool to reach up for it. Sade slipped her right hand into the tray and quickly lifted up the lighters. A turquoise one lay beneath. She clutched it silently, removed her hand and slid it into her unwrapped pocket on the side away from the counter. Stiffly, she turned to the others. Now, nah, not big enough. Marcia was shaking her head. Don't think my mum actually wants chocolates anyway. She's on a diet, see. Maybe I'll get her some next year. Come on, Donna, let's go. Sade saw the look of momentary surprise in both adults' eyes. They exchanged a glance of being caught off guard, then both shifted their gaze to her. Without saying anything, Sade turned to the door. Had they seen the guilt written all over her face? As soon as they passed beyond the window of Dord's Dowd's store, Sade thrust the lighter into Marcia's hand and ran. Oh, temper, she heard Donna remark. Sade kept running, gripping her rucksack to control its bouncing. She desperately hoped Marion would still be in the library and wouldn't see her. But Marion's mother and uncle would be bound to describe the three girls in Avon uniform had come into the shop. They'd probably check to see if anything was missing near where she'd been standing. Did they know exactly how many lighters should be in the tray? She began puffing for breath. That final look in their faces of Marion's mother and uncle and their grave silence cut her to the bone. That evening when Sade said she had a headache and wasn't hungry, Aunt Gracie was concerned. If Sade felt the same in the morning, she might need to see the doctor, she said. Sade went to bed early and Aunt Gracie came up to check on her. Femi also slipped in to give her one of his comics. He didn't talk much, but it, it, it was his way of saying sorry. How could she tell him that she had done something a hundred times worse to people who were refugees just like them? There was no escape from the disgust she felt at herself. She had only asked Mariam about her family to find out about her uncle in his shop so that she could steal from him. And after Mariam had told her story so simply in halting English, but in words that painted such a terrible picture, Sade had shut down her mind. But now the shutter had lifted and Mariam's words and pictures were burningly clear. <laughs>